If you work within a fast-paced CG pipeline, it's important to have control of your PBR shading workflow, while ensuring that your network, your naming conventions, and your file extensions are consistent and easy to keep track of. I will begin to illustrate my point by creating a simple object in my Maya viewport. I am creating a cube, which I have set up so that each of its sides is subdivided into nine faces. I will then select all the faces that make up the horizontal midsection of the cube and attach them. Now we'll separate the geometry into three independent meshes. Finally, for good measure, let's select all three objects and apply some proper UV mapping. For speed, I will use the automatic option, which works just fine for this example. As I open my script editor window, you will notice I have loaded a MEL script. This is a free script I have developed for my specific Maya Redshift workflow, although it can be easily modified to satisfy other requirements as well. Before I run my script, I want you to pay attention to three things. First, on line 13 through 20, I have created a series of string variables reflecting each one of my PBR shader nodes. These values determine the naming convention used when generating the path in my texture nodes. So they reflect exactly the textures generated by Substance Painter or any other 3D painting program I may wish to use. Second, on line 22, I have another string variable called file prefix, which I had given a value of test. This variable makes sure that all nodes created by the script will be given a prefix reflecting whatever value is contained within. Finally, on line 23, I have another variable called strdir for directory, which contains the location of where I intend to load textures from. Now let's select the three meshes, run the script, and let's see what happens. Okay, so the script has run its course, and we can see that in my hypershade window, we find three brand new shading groups, each one named using the file prefix variable test. If we magnify the nodes, we find that they all conform to the same object name prefix convention. Also, each texture node connected to its corresponding PBR channel is named using the same method, and it is given a reference to its purpose as well within the node itself. Even further down the pipeline, if we look at each newly created texture node, the file path reflects not only the correct path to the folder specified in the directory variable, but also the file name of the texture to load for that particular node, following the same object name prefix PBR layer definition convention expected from my painting program. For all intents and purposes, we now have three objects connected to their appropriate shading groups, which we can now export as OBJ or FBX to our painting program of choice. So let's just do that. Okay, so we are now in Substance Painter. I will create a new document in which I will load my newly exported objects. I will set my texture size to 4K, and let's see what my new object looks like.
As you can see, my exported FBX has three shaders assigned that correspond to the ones created by my script. I will quickly apply three different materials to each shader. Before I move on to the next step and export my textures, I have to make sure that all applicable PBR material channels are available. In Substance Painter, this can be done quickly by adding the missing channel. Unfortunately, there is no way to do it all at once, so I'm going to have to do this one material at a time, which is not an issue on a limited number of materials. On the other hand, when having to manage hundreds of materials, as rare as that may be, it can be frustrating. Perhaps that's something for Adobe to consider in future versions of Substance Painter. Now my materials are ready to be exported. The nice thing about Substance Painter is that it gives me the ability to customize and create new material templates, depending on my needs. In this instance, I have created a slightly modified version of the default Redshift template, where I have added a few channels like Emission, Diffuse, and Opacity. Lastly, I will point Substance to export all my textures in the same path I have specified in my script. So let's go ahead and export these textures. Okay, now let's get back to Maya and hit save, which will force Maya to reload any texture found in the hypershade. So there you have it. We have now three meshes, fully shaded, fully textured, with each texture node already set to load EXR files linearly, which is a function that I will make optional in future releases, for use cases requiring lower resolution maps in other file formats. If you think this script may be useful to your team, feel free to head over to my GitHub page. You will find the link within the description of this video. Thanks for watching.